so we seem to have a problem here. I mean, it's hard to make these things explode. Uh, and of course, when we're stuck in a situation like this, it's such a nice model, bouncing and neutrinos and everything. It's a shame it doesn't seem to work. But maybe we, there's some way to make it work. Perhaps observations can help guide us as to what's going wrong here. Absolutely, because we do know these things do explode. We see them. Now, one of the questions you might ask is, what exactly is exploding? And thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope and some actual ground-based observations now, we can often see uh, what explodes by pictures taken before the supernova exploded in nearby galaxies. One such example is here. Here is a supernova that exploded a couple years after it exploded, so we can see exactly where it's at. And then here is a picture taken of that same galaxy by the Hubble Space Telescope in the years preceding the supernova. And there's this little red tiny thing right there that seems to have exploded. Now the nice thing is we can measure the mass of stars essentially by how bright they are, and it's a fairly straightforward process. And so we have gone out and attempted to do that. And here's the work of Stephen Smart, who has gone through, and he can measure the mass in many, many cases, these guys. And then there are cases where he can't measure the mass because you look with the Hubble Space Telescope and you just simply don't see anything. So it gives you an upper limit. You know so it can't be brighter right. than something, so it can't be bigger than a certain mass. So we know it's going to be somewhere on that side of these boxes. So what do you conclude when you see this range of objects? Well, it looks like there are, uh, there's sort of a lower mass limit for type 2 supernovae. We don't find anything uh, smaller than this, which is about eight and a half times the mass of our sun. Mm -hmm. And that sort of makes sense. It's about the size we would expect from our calculations of when stars will start forming neutron stars. So that's great. But there's an interesting thing. It doesn't appear that there are any objects larger than about 16 and a half times the mass of our sun. Okay, so there seems to be like a limit of objects that turn into these type 2 supernovae. Okay, so these are presumably giant stars. I mean, do we are there actually stars bigger than this? Or is it just there are no stars bigger than that to go bang? Yeah, so we can go out and, for example, look at stars in the Milky Way. And here is a diagram that shows uh, essentially one of the supernovae and how massive it was. And then these little red dots are all red giant stars in the Milky Way, the stars we think uh, that are going to explode and form type 2 supernovae. And the range of 16 and a half is in this area. That's the area that stars seem to explode. So it's about half the red giants. Right. But the other half are more massive. Right. So these objects uh, we never seem to see turn into type 2 supernovae. So we seem to have two problems here. The first problem is that they don't explode at all, according to our theory. Yeah. And the second problem is only half of them seem to explode. So what can we do about this? Well, I think we need to go through and think about what happens to these objects. These objects don't appear as type 2 supernovae, but they eventually die, right? So something has to happen to them. Okay. So it might be that they simply disappear.